Hello everyone, and welcome to the second Autumn 2025 update from Gavsworthy. So here we go again, we're going to bring you more Autumn data up to update number two. And I should get some of that for you in a moment. Just say that first video series, our 6 UK weather forecast. We're going to be live at 6pm. We attend a 14 day hour and we'll include some long range in that one as well. So I shall see you a little bit later for our Wednesday live stream. Please like, share and subscribe on all today's videos and content. And thank you so much everyone for doing that. Thank you so much to Ricardo, to Richard Shaw for our lovely autumn updates gift. And thank you so much to Shrive Room for sorting out all the years for us. Thank you so much to Terry Scaldi as well, of course. And the hashtag Team Gav doing an amazing job for us as ever. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of information. So, the uh, autumn forecast. Remember, each one of these updates week by week is building up a picture forensically until we arrive at our autumn destination, which is the uh, seasonal forecast. The four of those a year. The autumn forecast will be uh, released on Wednesday, the 27th of August. Wednesday, 27th of August will be uh, the date of our autumn forecast so um you know got a few months to go <laughs> about three months to go less than three months isn't it anyway you know we've got to the end of august to go it's going to be a long one so uh we'll just at the start of the updates now but uh, that's one for your diaries please like share and subscribe on all of today's videos content etc 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 thanks so everyone for doing that and uh, let's crack on then with your second autumn update we're going to begin with CT, so we're doing a May data special, May to autumn data special uh, this week. So, uh, May 2025 came in with a central England temperature of 13.2, 2.1 degrees above 61 to 90, 90 average. And you know that we love a countdown at Gaz Wovitz. Because <laughs> that is, in fact, within the top 10 uh, warmest uh, May CT since 1950. So, du, 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 du. <laughs> here we go then. At number 10, we've got 1998. The 10th warmest May for Central England temperature was uh, 1998. This is how autumn 1998 comes out. Rather unsettled, a rather westerly autumn. Uh, this one with plenty of low pressure in from off the Atlantic. Had a wet October, quite an unsettled September as well, I think. I reckon November was a bit dry, but also a bit cooler with uh, northerly snaps coming and going. Uh, number nine, I've got 2022. So after a long, hot summer of 2022, the high pressure went north and allowed lower pressure in off the Atlantic. The uh, hot summer broke at the beginning of September with those spectacular thunderstorms. I'm sure you all remember those and torrential rain. And the rest of the autumn was generally quite wet, but also mild. At number eight, we've got 2025. So, yes, the eighth warmest May uh, was 2005, a central England temperature. The questions we're trying to answer are what will the autumn of 2025 have in store? We don't yet know, but we're going to try and answer those questions on the 27th of June, August, I should say. <laughs> At number seven, we've got 2017. So this one uh, with uh, low pressure sitting to our east and north, east, high pressure out in the Atlantic winds coming in from the northwesterly direction. So, of course, but the skies go Martian orange on the 16th of October 2017 as we get the remains of Hurricane Ophelia. That's what the author is mainly remembered for, but also had quite a, a quite a wet spell during September, a little bit cooler as well for that September. I uh, had a very wet day, I think, in October. Um, October 2017 contains the uh, wettest day for October on record. And November with a few uh, cooler incidents and cooler snaps coming in as well. At number six, we've got 1964. So this one has high pressure sitting just to our west during autumn. 
quite a quiet and also a cool autumn, I would think, that one. And then at number five, we've got 2018. This is a relatively quiet and uh, quite dry, but uh, mild autumn with high pressure to the east and low pressure out to the west. We bring the winds up from a southerly direction with that worm. we got 1952, which looks like a cold and wet autumn. At number four, high pressure in the North Atlantic, low pressure to our south and east. The winds coming in from a northeasterly direction, cold and wet for that autumn. And at 2008, uh, at number three, <laughs> we've got high pressure to the west and low pressure to be east. It's a cooler autumn compared to a lot of them that we had during the 2000s and have had recently. Has, of course, famously, remember, remember, I believe that word, <laughs> has snow anyway in the, uh, in the south because loads of southern England at the end of October. Wet spell during uh, September and a few uh, cold snaps in uh, November. Perhaps a hint of the winter to come. At number two, we've got 1992. So uh, this one has plenty of low pressure to our east. So over to our east winds coming in from a westerly direction. So uh, I've got a wet September, a really potent cold snap, late October of 1992 with severe frost for October. And then a mild and wettish uh, November. And then at number one, we've got 2024. Yes, 2024 was the uh, warmest uh, May for the central England temperature since 1950. And uh, the autumn of 2024 looks like that. One of those bizarre sort of anomalies that we get. Uh, a lot of these days, not all that well defined with above average heights through the Atlantic into Northern Europe. Right, let's start putting all that together then. So this is how all September's combined are looking following the uh, top 10 warmest Septembers. And it's a wet signal for Septembers. Do -do -do. Interestingly, uh, with low pressure through uh, much of West Europe combined with blocking going up to the north so um quite a wet uh, signal for uh for um the september's there september 24 was of course very very wet and uh, then we've got uh, all october's combined so uh, this one taking the load pressure then more towards the east higher pressure is out to the west still looks quite unsettled and uh, probably quite atlantic driven with that and then perhaps a bit of, bit of a hint of a, a cooler or a cold in November with higher pressure tends to be more towards the west of us and lower pressure towards the east. So that might yield a few uh, cooler interview, uh, intervals, uh, a few cooler snaps there coming in from the north. The coldest weather, though, will be through the trough across uh, central and eastern parts of Europe, of course, and down into southeast Europe as well. All autumn combined, following the top 10 uh, warmest uh, Mays, looking like that. So, uh, low pressure below average heights tend to be over and to the east of us. High pressure above average heights out to the west. And, uh, yeah, we could be bringing in uh, some uh, northwestern in, in, um, uh, episodes and outbreaks at times. Again, uh, it looks like it's a pretty unsettled signal for those uh, autumns and a little bit cooler as well. Right, let's go straight on to our second data set. This time uh, we're looking at May's England Wales precipitation. So uh, for May 2025, we have 32.8 millimetres of rain, just 52% of a long-term average, see the blue line here, which of course is um, the uh, is the is the line for May 25. It's under the underneath the average, the black line here. So it was significantly drier than normal. The normal would probably have been the driest uh, May on record. It was a bit slightly more unsettled spell that occurred late on in the month. It is, however, a top 10 driest May. You know we love it. <laughs> Down at gas weather mids. So here we go again. We're starting off um, with uh, 1998 again. So I'm uh, doing top 10 driest Mays now. At number 10, we've got 1998. Also Atlantic driven and westerly. So uh, a wet signal again for uh, those, uh, for that uh, particular uh, autumn as uh, low pressure in from off the Atlantic. Uh, number nine, we've got 2025, so we're placed as the ninth driest May for England Wales precipitation um, at the moment. So, yes, uh, we've answered those questions. Will we have 
a wet autumn, we have a dry autumn, we have a cold autumn, or will it be warm? That's what we want to know, isn't it? But we won't know until the 27th of August. So number eight, we've got 1980. This is quite an interesting autumn with the overall below average heights, low pressure over to the east of us, and probably hint of a northerly wind. Does have a dry and quite warm September. Then I think it sounds very wet, very unsettled in October. And then November actually turns cold early. So it does have a white bonfire night. And not just from frost, but could you believe also from snow from some parts of the country. I think the Channel Islands, for example, has a white bonfire night in 1980. Rather a strange uh, autumn mat one. At uh, number seven, we've got 1959. This is an extension of the long summer, really, during this autumn, with above average heights, high pressure still there to the east of the northeast of us. So, uh, with this one, uh, the summer gets going in uh, the spring and, of course, reaches, reaches its peak in terms of dry and warm weather through the summer. But it's still ongoing into the autumn as well. So, September and October are both relatively dry and warm. I think it breaks at the end of October and November turns uh, very wet, but is also mild. A warm autumn, that one. Got 1970 at number six in terms of the sixth driest uh, May. So uh, that with high pressure down, low pressure to the north, just a classic sort of westerly, quite mild autumn. And then at number five, we've got 1990 with high pressure out to our west, northwest, low pressure to our south and east winds coming in more from an east or a northeasterly uh, direction. A few cold snaps in uh, that autumn in November. October's quite mild, a mix, and uh, I think there's a relatively unsettled September with average temperatures. At number four, we've got 1956. So after the exceptionally wet and cold summer, uh, the autumn is uh, generally mild and dry. At number three, we've got 1989 with another extended summer starting in the spring and going on into the autumn. September and October, I think, are both uh, very mild but also quite dry. A little bit more unsettled in November. Overall, we get high pressure centering over Western Europe during that quiet but warm uh, autumn. And then we've got 1991. This one just rather mild but also unsettled. Low pressure in for the Atlantic. At number one, we've got 2020. So 2020 was the driest autumn for England. Was well, driest May, I should say, for England where precipitation. Uh, this one, again, the higher pressure tending to be uh, all over the place. And uh, yeah, it's quite a mix, uh, quite a mixed uh, autumn uh, that we have for that one. I think last week I made a bit of a faux pas. <laughs> and uh, didn't I say the um, uh, autumn 2020 has a hurricane Ophelia? Of course, that's wrong. That's 2017's right. It took me to task on that one. Not particularly memorable autumn. I think. 2020 but has that exceptionally wet day in October with uh, with um, the wettest October day on record but overall not all that much to remember about the autumn of 2020 other than perhaps it was slightly cooler than a lot of the autumns that we tend to get uh, these days. Right, put all that together. This how all Septembers combined are looking. Following the top 10 dry space, completely different <laughs> compared to uh, the first set. So, much more of an anti cyclonic signal, a drier and warmer signal then for those uh, Septembers. All Octobers combined, looking more unsettled with lower pressure, lower pressure tending to be to the north of the east. High pressure is out to our west. And all Novembers combined. That could be a rather colder signal with some higher pressure between Scotland and Iceland, maybe pulling the wind around to more of an easterly there. Perhaps a dry, colder signal for the Novembers. And this is how all autumns can buy a lot following the top 10 driest Mays. Uh, and we tend to get higher pressure centering over and just to the west. Others, right? Okay, what's that doing there? That's a surprise. <laughs> Let's go on to our final data set, and for this one, we're going to be looking at the uh, top ten sunniest Mays and the autumns that follow them. As uh, yes, we did see yet again another very sunny month in what was an exceptionally sunny uh, spring. So uh, that's how the uh, 
Sunshine Average comes out for May 2025. Interesting, Matt, it was particularly sunny in the north. Not quite as sunny down in the south, actually. And the highest sunshine area is actually the uh, sort of north of Scotland with 170% of average. It does, however, place uh, May 2025 in the top 10 sunniest as well. <coughs> So shy it won't be gabby yet all life she bad cough. And so for our final state set, we are going to be doing uh another countdown. Hold on everyone. Okay, let's do that then. So uh, we're gonna start at number ten with nineteen fifty-nine. Again, that one's back. High pressure. It's over. So the east of country winds coming up from a southerly direction. A warm and dry autumn in 1959. At number nine, we've got 1977 with low pressure off the Atlantic. This is the autumn I was born. Low pressure off the Atlantic. That's a mild and unsettled autumn in 1977. At number eight, we've got 2001. The warmest October on record, I think, is still 2001. Uh, otherwise, though, November has a few cooler snaps and a September was quite cool as well in uh, 2001. Uh, perhaps a slightly drier uh, uh, autumn, but October is wet and warm. At number seven, 1980, is back as well. About the seventh sunniest May with low pressure to the east. Seems to be normal. I mean, it does have that dry September, but uh, very cold in early November of 1980. 1990 comes back at number six with high pressure out to the west, low pressure to the south and to the east. At number five, we've got 1992. That one's back as well. Lots of low pressure in off the Atlantic. A wet September, very cold at the end of October, and then mild and unsettled in November. Number four, 2018 returns with high pressure to our east, dry, dry-ish and mild for that autumn. And then at number three, we've got 1989 with high pressure right over top of the country, a warm and dry autumn there. Number two, 2025 returns, or not really had it yet, have we? <laughs> What's it going to yield? We're going to find out in a few weeks. So then at number one, 2020 is back. Yes, the uh, sunniest May for the UK was 2020. And uh, what was that autumn like? Well, it was mixed with low pressure up here, higher pressure through here, winds in off the Atlantic. Let's go through uh, the final uh, months then. Oh, what, what am I saying? Let's go through our all months combined. Finally, so uh, we start all September combined, looking for the top 10 sunny Mays with high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, a mild and dry signal for those Septembers. All October's combined, not so bad. Why am I shouting October's combined? I want to get my series. All October's combined, low pressure off the Atlantic. It's a wet and mild signal. And all November's combined, but the top 10 sunny Mays with high pressure right in over top of the country, so a dry anticyclone could probably read something by an ish signal, a signal, but could be some frost. Lastly, all autumns combined look like that. For the top 10 sunny space, we were low pressure to, away towards Green Iceland and higher pressure to be through West Europe. It could be a more anticyclonic signal for those autumns. And we're done with our second. Autumn 2025 update. There we go. So if you enjoyed this uh, video, please like, share, subscribe. We'll be doing more long range for you next week, of course. Don't know, don't know what we're looking at uh, next week yet, but we'll be another awesome update for you then. We're going to be live at uh, 6 p.m. So if you've got any questions about this uh, update, then fire away on our live stream. We'll also be live streaming at 10 to 14 day and bringing you some long range as well. Thank you so much to Richard Shrine and Terry, hashtag Team Gal, for the work on this, uh, on this autumn update. We'll end it there then. You enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. And for this one, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.